Hi everyone and welcome to another Out and About video. Today we're over in a place called Crosher Booth and we're here to cover the tale of a 38 year old former cotton weaver by the name of Charles Chadwick. From all accounts, Charles had come from a, a tightly knitted together family in that they all looked after each other. He was the sixth eldest child of the Chadwicks. Um, he had two brothers who were born later, which in total gave them eight children. Um, his parents were Thomas and I think it was Mary Jane. I think it was called Mary Jane Chew, her surname was Chew, when, uh, or before she got married to Thomas Chadwick. But they all resided at number 32 Wilkinson Street. The census records of 18, I think 71 and 1881 showed us, showed us that they all lived there at the back of the time. Now, at some point during 1881 and 1891, they had moved to number 32 Wilkinson Street. Um, but Charles, like I said, right at the start of this video, he never got married and he never had children. He always spent all his time living with his parents. Now, this, obviously, it built up a strong bondship with his parents. They all looked after each other. The family was, like I said, they was really tightly knitted together. But as his life went on, he seemed to encounter a lot of death in the family. And we think this is what kind of pushed him to committing suicide back in 1910, up here at Pinney Lodge. Now, as we make our way up, this extremely steep incline to where Pinner Lodge was. We can uh, tell you that Charles himself used to work at Hargreaves Mill in Haslingdon. But leading up to the time of his death in September 1910, he'd been unemployed for about, well, anywhere between three and four years if the newspaper articles are anything to be believed. But in that time, it appears that he turned to alcohol and he was seen on many occasions being intoxic or intoxicated, I should say. Um, after visiting the pubs, the alehouses in and around Haslingdon, I think it was a Swan Inn, was one of his popular haunts. And obviously he had the commercial, um, that was on the corner at uh, Lower Deeding Gate. But yeah, from all accounts, um, on the death of his parents, obviously it left him all alone. That safety bubble, that safety net, if you will, that he once lived in, that had been well and truly burst. Um, we also know that not too long after his death, Charles moved to number five, Prospect Hill. Just lower down in Haslingdon um, and farther away from Wilkinson Street and like I said this itself probably would have been a massive shock to his system he had his parents to fall back on and to rely on um, the tight-knit family that he once lived in was no longer there so to be on his own after all the years of living with his parents and one or two of his brothers. He never had to fend for himself. He never had to look after himself. He had no one else, or nobody else, I should say, to rely on. Now, the covering of this story has also brought us here to Pinner Quarry. And this quarry, I, I'm not gonna lie, it's fascinated me for quite a while. Um, because from what I've seen online and the videos, the photographs, and I'm not going to get too close to the edge now. 
but there is a way inside and just through the tree line there I don't know if you can see it there's like a metal gate blocking it but one of these does have a way in but it's highly dangerous and it just goes on for miles and miles and miles I'll put photographs over to show you guys what exactly what I mean but yeah um, there's a lot of wooden struts which are keeping the, the ceiling of the quarry in situ if you will because it is so dangerous I'd love to get in there one of these days just for a bit of an explore but not in today's video um, I mean you can see now the overgrowth getting down into the quarry itself makes it a bit more treacherous and we're not exactly dressed for that today with trainers and uh, just jeans on we, uh, we, really we should have put our safety boots on but we'll come back here one day probably when this overgrowth died down a bit and we'll we'll at least get in the doorway and we'll get, we'll get some video shots but yeah this is a pinner quarry and it's like I said it's a fascinating place it really is As you can see from the footage now, trying to get to the lodge itself where Charles took his own life, I don't think we're going to be able to get to it. Um, there's quite a lot of high embankments. And we have been speaking to a local chap called Keith, who lives on the corner house at, uh, at Pinner Lane. And he was saying it's very, very difficult to actually get to the lodge now. There's a lot of obviously overgrowth and whatnot to, to uh, circumnavigate through. So he said getting to it is nigh on impossible. So what we'll do, we'll tell the tale from from where we are now, and uh, I just hope you guys find it as interesting as what we have uncovering it. Now we're getting a bit frightened here because we don't know where these cows are going, oh, they're going left, thank God for that. We got a little bit worried there. Because, uh, shouting at me because I brought her out to cover this store and we've been attacked by a herd of cows. And they're all giving us some serious side eye, Vic. Uh -oh. Uh -oh. Yeah, I think we'll go. Yeah. <laughs> I've got a feeling they're following us. <laughs> we know that about 8.25 in the morning on the uh, 6th of September a man called Joseph um, had met Charles actually outside or close to by the swan in, in Haslingdon and Joseph had obviously an in the inquest that had to take place after the body of Charles was uh, recovered from Pinner Lodge he would tell at the inquest that it was acting, uh, that Charles was acting in a strange manner um, and whilst Charles had been known for drink and being drunk this was something completely different and it also came out that Charles had asked Joseph if he, he had any laudanum or if he could get his hands on some laudanum he would go and poison himself now laudanum back in the day was used for a whole range of things from backache, muscle aches, fatigue, incontinence basically all kinds of ailments um, but it was a mixture of opium and alcohol now obviously Joseph at the time said no I don't have anything like that and obviously I'm not gonna go and get you anything like that now they stood around for about 10 minutes talking and then they both parted ways and this was the last known time that Charles will be seen alive ever again it was about three hours later when news had been translated over to the Haslandon police I think it was PC Pickles who took the call and this call, we don't know what was said or how it was presented, but news had filtered through of a body being discovered or being seen here at Pinner Lodge. So PC Pickles with another police constable made the way over. And it, 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 it occurs that, or it seems that, when they got here, they actually saw a body floating about 14 yards into where the lodge was, into the middle of the water. So they went in and they've, uh, they've dragged the body out and it was Charles Chadwick. Now, they brought the body out and they transferred it over to the Black Dog pub, which is just this side of Crosshire Booth, and we'll take a photo and a video of that when we get there. But apparently, by all accounts, when they actually got the body there and they checked it over, PC Pickles, maybe was checking the body over, 
they saw that Charles had his throat slit from ear to ear. He also had a wound at least two inches deep towards the left hand side of the, of the neck. More strangely however was the fact that Charles had also between 20 and 30 cuts or stab wounds, punctures to his chest, his, his breast and to his stomach area. Now obviously shocked by the discovery of the inflictions on Charles's body, um, they obviously, I don't know, again I don't know how it occurred but he must have had some form of identification on him. So they went to where his brother James lived in Haslingdon. Now he obviously confirmed the identity of the body being his brother Charles but they went to number five Prospect Hill where Charles lived alone and when they got into the kitchen they found a pocket knife that was covered in blood. They also found large amounts of blood on a slop stone as well as the kitchen floor. Now I don't know about you but Prospect Hill if Charles had made his way over Cribden Lane and down this lane to Pinner Lodge which is just over in that direction he may well have inflicted the puncture marks to his chest and to his breast back at his house at Prospect Hill but I don't see how he's managed to cut his throat from ear to ear and a two inch deep cut to the left hand side of his throat which was I may add freely flowing with blood when they went to the black dog inn which is just around here I think personally that Charles has slit his throat here at Pinner Lodge and the knife he was using is perhaps still in the lodge itself because I don't see how if Charles has made the walk from Cribden Lane which I think he's done and walked this way I don't think he would have managed to walk nearly an hour's walk with a slit throat and all the puncture wounds to his chest I could be wrong he could have perhaps walked past Laneside um, in towards the centre of Rotten Stall and this way but that would have took him even longer so I think he's come over Cribden Lane to Pinner Lodge and then obviously to where he committed suicide but the question I've got to ask is did he commit suicide I mean was the more added you know to this story because if he's created such brutal in inflictions on his own body he'd been in a lot of pain or perhaps these these in inflictions on his body they might have been historical it might have been his way of self-harming because he was such he was in such a, a low state of mind like I said he lost all his family he was now living on his own that bubble had burst perhaps he inflicted these wounds on his chest as a, as a cry out for help if you will back in the day uh, it, it's one of these stories which again we can't really work out what went on in Charles's mind on the day he came here and took his own life Now the inquest took place here at the Black Dog Inn in Crosshire Booth on the 9th of September and his brother John actually turned around and told the jury and the, the listening crowd that if he'd have known about Charles's state of mind that morning and he'd have been there only 10, at his house 10 minutes earlier obviously the suicide wouldn't have taken place and that he'd have took him out, he'd have made him drink OXO, not alcohol, to try to clear his mind. Um, it also came out, like I said at the start of this video, that Charles had been suffering for the last three or four years he'd been out of work he'd been drinking heavily so again a form of depression one could say as for the injuries inflicted on his body this may have been a cry out for help over the years because like I said to walk which I think he did from Cribden Lane to here which we've looked on Google Maps you're talking about a 55 minute to an hour walk if he'd have inflicted them injuries that morning after he'd seen Joseph at the Swan Inn public house could he have walked this far in such pain they could well have been self-inflicted over a matter of you know, over days over weeks over months we don't know um, all we do know is like I said from reading the newspaper articles from putting two and two together perhaps we might be overstepping the mark but I personally believe that Charles was suffering from severe depression I also believe he brought a knife with him on that morning and it was when he got here at Pinner Lodge he then slit his throat the two inch wound on the left side of his throat was freely flowing, uh, flowing with blood 
when PC Pickles removed his body from the lodge. He was also accompanied with PC Clayton. And like I said, when they got to the Black Dog Inn that morning, blood was coming out quite profusely from the wound in his neck. The slit across his throat, he must have done it here at the lodge if it was suicide. Um, if that's the case, no other knife was found. The police never found any other instruments which could have caused it. Which makes me believe if he slit his throat here, did he walk into the lodge with the blood flowing and he's obviously lost consciousness and then fallen into the water and therefore drowned. That's what I personally believe happened. I think he did commit suicide that morning. I don't think there was anything untoward um, and it was all a cry out for help. His bubble had burst, he'd lost everything. I think it was around about 1901 or 1903, I'll put the year down below, when both his parents died the same year. So that security blanket had gone and it really affected his mind. So as I thought, his, his father died in 1901 and his mother, Murray, died in 1903. One of his brothers died in 1906, a guy called Thomas. So you can see just how all this may have effective, uh, affected Charles in such great detail and in such short space of time. You know, his mental state of mind would have been shot. And I keep saying it, but everything that he once treasured had now gone and gone in such well, I'd say quick, quick timings. You know, there was like a four or five year gap in between the deaths. So all this would have occurred quite quickly. And it's no coincidence that around about 1906 is when he started to drink heavily and he was seen frequenting the public houses in and around Haslingdon on a regular basis. He was always intoxicated. I won't say he caused anybody any trouble, but it's just his way of life completely changed. He also hadn't been into work for those three or four years. Um, like I said, he was a former employee at Hargreaves Mill. So obviously he lost his job there and for three or four years he just wasn't working. So again, it, to me, it just all seems to stem around possible depression and that poor, uh, poor Charles just wasn't coping with the loss of his family members. So as we make our way back out to the car, um, we're going to head towards St James's Church in Asenden where uh, Charles was was interred but I don't know if you can see it just in front of both these cars that is the black dog where the inquest took place on the 9th and where Charles's body was brought to on the 6th after it was recovered from the lodge and it's just there where the black dog is So we're here, back at St James's in Haslingdon, looking for the grave of Charles Chadwick. He was interred here on the 9th of September. So basically, just three days after his lifeless body was recovered from Pinner Lodge over in Crosshire Booth. Now, just like other stories and other times we've visited this graveyard, we've been unsuccessful in locating graves but I do remember when we came here just the other week I do remember seeing the surname Chadwick on a couple of the headstones so I'm hoping that obviously Charles is just one of those which I may have unknowingly seen like I said just the other week now I want to just thank a couple of people for commenting on the previous video when I mentioned about final resting places and unable to find them. Now if apparently it was a suicide and prior to 1822 a lot of suicide victims they were seemingly were buried at crossroads with a stake pushed through them. Now apparently up until 1822 that was the norm from what I've read but I think something happened in Parliament where that act was abolished they kind of stopped doing that um, for whatever reason unethical or, or whatnot I just don't know 
but yeah it's interesting that um that was the case you know um suicide victims were buried at crossroads of all places um so yeah so just a shout out to a couple of you guys for for mentioning that uh, because it uh, that was a useful bit of information which kind of helps when we do these kind of videos and this is the this is the type of thing we want in this community in the depod community if people can communicate with us and send us messages or comment on videos you know with information such as that it helps immensely and obviously we can't thank you guys enough for doing things like that now why is it when i'm looking for the grave of say a certain person i do spot all the names all the surnames like we did the other week i remember seeing chadwick graves now i've come looking for a chadwick grave i can't seem to find any <laughs> but there's definitely chadwick's here that i saw and it's just remembering where they were so we'll keep on looking and hope for the best but well, as you can see on some of these they've weathered quite badly Now you may have seen during the video, or you will have seen during the video, some footage of another church that was in Croatia Booth. And that I think was St John's. And as you could see from the video footage, it's in quite, quite a needy rebuild, if you will. It seems to be in a lot of disrepair. Um, but it's a fascinating place to go. Um, and we, we spoke to a guy called Keith there who was telling us some fascinating stories about it. But there's also quite a lot of upheaval and a lot that's gone wrong with the place. But if you're ever in Crosher Booth, just nip up uh, and go and look at it yourselves because it does look an, in an incredible place. But we're here at St James's and again, unfortunately, we're not having any joy looking for Charles Chadwick's final resting place. One of these days we will come here and we will find what we're looking for. But again, it seems to be another it's a miss one we've just scoured pretty much all of that side with no luck so i might just go for a quick walk around this way and then i might actually pop into the church today because the doors are open because of obviously sadly queen elizabeth's passing i think plenty or uh, many churches will be open this weekend people signing books of condolences and, and what have you so i might just pop in um and see if they've got any information maybe on headstones and how the plotted out you know they might give us some indication of where we're looking for or what we're looking for it looks like we're gonna to have to end the video here everyone so apologies again for not finding another final resting place it does seem like st james's here in asdenden is one of the most difficult places to come if you're looking for um the final resting place of one of the characters in our stories it really is like a needle in the haystack no fault of anybody's it's just what it is if you like this video don't forget to comment down below and tell us your thoughts if you enjoyed it give us a big thumbs up like i said like the like it because it does help with the algorithms it pushes the video further out don't forget to subscribe more importantly because again it helps the channel grow and in the meantime as i always say at the end of all these videos take care most importantly take care of each other and in the meantime i will be back soon with another tale from our past <laughs>